apologies for the um, the lateness. Things ran a little bit long with my middle school class, but I'm here now. Uh, also below, Mateo. Um, so, as per usual, we're going to continue with equal. Um, it's important to note, though, that we actually only have two classes after today. We have today, we have next Monday, and we have next Wednesday. And that's it, as far as I know. Uh, so uh, we're going to try and make as much progress as we can in Eagle in the next couple of lessons, because usually the last lesson in the semester is reserved for different stuff. Um, so it will be probably time reserved for we won't be able to use it for um, evil. So I want to make sure that we make as much progress as we can today and Monday. Um, but, yeah. For that reason, without any further ado, let's go ahead and continue with Eagle. So if you open it up, one of two things is going to happen. Either you're just going to get the control panel open again, like either just the control panel is going to open or the control panel and your schematic are both going to open. It depends on whether or not you closed Eagle while the schematic was still open. If the schematic was still open, it will open up. If not, you'll just have the control panel, in which case you can just double click on the schematic in your project folder in order to bring it open again. And this is what we worked on uh, Monday. Yes, today's Wednesday. That's what, this is what we worked on on Monday. So we added the the NE555 timer, and we added these four resistors to our project. So now what we need to do is we need to add the next few components in our project. Not only that, we need to, you know, add them in the correct spot and um, make sure we've got um, Everything's sort of laid out correctly before we start hooking everything up. In case we don't, we can always move the stuff around manually later on. But for now, you know, let's just let's just make sure we got everything in in a, in a good spot. So the first thing I'm going to add is a capacitor. Now capacitors, you don't have resistors. Um, okay, do you remember how to add resistors? Okay, so yeah, you go to the add window here. Um, we can uncheck SMDs and then just type in resistor. And this first result appears from Adafruit. I'll just expand the RUS one, which will have a bunch of resistors. Uh, they're all American symbol resistors. And I believe I used the R207, RUS207 slash 9. Just hit that and then hit either OK or double click on it and then add four of them to your diagram. So, okay, capacitors. Capacitors are sort of, kind of, kind of, sort of, like batteries. I say kind of, sort of, sort of, kind of. Because capacitors are similar to batteries in the sense that both capacitors and batteries store energy and discharge energy when they're not storing it. So they can charge and store energy, and they can discharge their stored energy. However, capacitors and batteries work off of two very, very different concepts. Batteries store electrical energy 
by converting it essentially into chemical energy. You have some acids in a battery, um, and you have some like lead plates sometimes or whatever. And the the way when the battery is charging, the the interaction between the acid and the lead plates causes you know ions to be added to the the lead plate. Er, I believe that's the order that it's in. And then when it's discharging, you know, the acids interact with the lead and then they strip off some of the electrons and it moves them around inside and sort of creates this soup of electrically charged stuff. And then that, that, that you know, sends the, uh, the information or the information, the power down the line and through the battery down the line and, and to wherever it needs to be powered. So you typed in resistor and did you, did you get resistors? Okay, do you have the Adafruit resistors? So do, do you have an Adafruit result at the top here? Okay, well, you know what? It's not a huge deal. Um, you can use... A generic eagle um, resistor uh, symbol or uh, resistor as well like it doesn't have to be just as long as it's a single resistor because really the reason why I'm talking about the Adafruit one is because it's the um, it's the American symbol for a resistor which you know sort of keeps some consistency between your diagrams and mine but in the end it's more important to have just some kind of resistor. So if you've got like the Eagle LT Spice, um, it's labeled resistor European symbol or the, the dummy resistor. Well, don't use that one. Don't use the dummy one. Um, but if you've got like the, the LT Spice library you can use either one of these resistors it's just your resistor symbols are going to look different from mine but that's okay they're still going to function as resistors the more important thing is this this on the right hand side looks at least something like this There's a generic one, I believe, just labeled resistor. You can use anything in there as well, because that's all going to function like a resistor. Um, there should be an REU207 or slash 7 in there. You can use that one. That just keeps the size more or less consistent on the actual breadboard itself when we're designing the breadboard. but Or, excuse me, the circuit board. Not the breadboard. Uh, the circuit board. But again, not like a huge huge deal so if you can't if you can't find that specific one just end up using one that has like a like a reasonably sized resistor on the right hand side over here How many look? <clears throat> Sorry, uh, any luck finding the resistors going? Uh, we'll get to that in a moment, Mateo. Can you find any of these resistors, like the generic resistor symbol, or uh, part of the library? They're all alphabetically listed, so scroll down. In the meantime, I'm going to be right back.
Okay, I'm back. So uh, in the meantime, I'll explain the difference between batteries and capacitors. So batteries store their electrical current with chemical energy. Uh, capacitors, on the other hand, capacitors are kind of interesting. So basically, a capacitor is, let me pull up my handy dandy paint program here. A capacitor is two conductive plates. So these, imagine you're looking at it from the side. So they're kind of like these little metal plates, in essence. They're not always going to be like that, but, you know, well, let's use our imaginations. It's fun like that. So you got these little conductive metal plates, and then you've got something in between them. And that something in between them can be uh, non-conductive. Well, it's general, it, it is going to be non-conductive, but um, it could be some kind of non-conductive or insulating material, like a small amount of it, or it could be just plain air. And the way it works is, so the electrical current travels into the capacitor, right? So you got electrons, pew, 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 going this way. Well, this part, this conductive plate, starts to become more negative. And you might have an equal amount of positive and negative on this plate. Okay, excellent. Glad to hear it, Colin. Um, but as this particular one becomes more and more negative, it starts drawing uh, the positive charge to the side of the plate that um, that faces the one that's getting electricity. Not only that, it forces negative charge to travel down the conductive wire on the other end. So in essence, a capacitor stores electrical energy by just building up base electrical charge in itself and making it hard for the other half of the capacitor to send, like a capacitor stores electrical energy by making it hard for electrical energy to travel through it. Because there's that, there's that air in between, um, a relatively significant amount of energy, electrical energy, must be built up on one half the capacitor in order for the other half to be affected by it. So for that reason, generally speaking, capacitors charge faster than batteries, and capacitors discharge faster than batteries. On the other hand, capacitors don't tend to store as much electrical energy as batteries do. And that's just, that's just the natural function of how these things are how they operate. A battery can much more efficiently store electrical energy and chemical energy. A capacitor, at some point, you know, you can you can increase the charge of the capacitor by increasing the distance between the two plates, but at some point, unless you have a very, very strong circuit, those plates are going to be too far away for them to influence one another. And so the capacitor is no longer effective. It's just a dead part of the circuit and so the circuit doesn't run. So there's 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 a balancing game that goes into that as well. But yeah, so we're going to add a capacitor to our um our uh circuit. Now, it's going to need to be a polarized capacitor. Because capacitors can be either uh, polarized or non-polarized. What do I mean by that? Well, resistors are non-polar. Resistors, like, a, like I've said before, you can plug a resistor in you know, one way and flip it around and plug it in the other way. It, it don't care. It's going to run just fine. Something like a diode is polarized. If you plug it in one way, it'll work just fine. If you plug it in the other way, everything breaks. So it's a very specific way that it is um, hooked up to the circuit. Unfortunately, we're making things more complex for ourselves, so we're going to have a polarized capacitor. We want to make sure that the electrical, uh, electrical current travels in one direction. And also, we want the functions of capacitor. Now, capacitor is very good at uh, evening out the electrical current in a circuit. So, you know, you might have your your uh, 
your circuit plugged into the wall. Now, when you have it plugged into the wall, we all know 120 volts um, and uh, 60 amps, 60 hertz. Good Lord. It's not 60 amps. It's definitely not 60 amps. That's how people very much die. Um, anyway, 120 volts. However, the amount of power that goes through the circuit, despite the fact that it varies normally from being alternating current, will not always average out to be 120 volts. Sometimes you'll get these little fluctuations in which you get more power or less power, and um, you know not everything's not everything's 100% perfect. A capacitor helps to even out those fluctuations in power because it will fill up and then it will discharge at an even rate. So it doesn't really matter if you know you're you suddenly get a small spike in the the number of amps uh, through uh, a circuit that is plugged into because the capacitor is already filled up and is now discharging, it will always discharge at a very smooth rate. I mean, it's not going to be the same rate until it's out. You know, as it, as it, as the capacitor loses electrical energy, it will start to become weaker and weaker just because of the way that it sends energy across. There's going to be less negative charge over here, so there are going to be fewer electrons that are being shot out that way. But it's it's a much, if you were to look at a curve of how a capacitor discharges, it's a much smoother curve than one you might get from just like being hooked up to a to an unstable circuit. It will never look like that, by the way. That's an exaggeration. But um, I mean, at least I, I hope, because also you'd be going back in time right about here, and uh, you got far bigger problems than your circuit outputting uh, inconsistent voltages and, and amps. Um, but anyway, a capacitor helps to even out the circuit, which is much gentler on integrated circuits and stuff like that. Like timers like it when you don't have crazy spikes in power being sent to them and stuff like that. Uh, LEDs like like it when you don't send crazy spikes in power because it helps prevent them from popping. Um, circuits in general operate better when they're not just like getting wrecked by spikes in power. So a capacitor is generally a very good friend to delicate circuits for that reason. Um, so yes, polarized capacitor. Uh, again, if, if you're using the Adafruit library, it's going to be under C pole US. Um, if you're not using the Adafruit library, there is the generic resistor library for Eagle, and you can use a C pole US uh, capacitor here as well. Um, in fact, since I think everybody should have that one, um, we're going to go ahead. We're going to go ahead and use the the generic. Now there should be okay again. This is the same kind of thing where there's no there's no uh, there's no value for the capacitor. Um, so in the end, what we're going to use is let me scroll up back down to here we find one that looks like it's not an insane size and uh, it was the 207 slash 7 I believe if I remember correctly Okay, so here I'm under resistor, which is the generic Eagle resistor library. As you can see, resistors, capacitors, inductors, all that kind of stuff. Then under here we've got C capacitor EU, C trim, C US, C pole EU, and C pole US. These are regular unpolarized capacitors. We're not going to be using those. We're going to be using the C pole um, sublibrary. In fact, we're going to be using the C pole 
US said library because we want to use the US symbols for the polarized resistor. Again, just for consistency's sake. I mean, in the end, this is just a diagram. It's not going to change anything on our circuit by using the EU symbol. Um, but uh, we're in the US. Let's use the US one. Then, scrolling down in that, I've got the C pole US E15 five axial. It's a mouthful. I know. It's a huge mouthful. But basically what this means is it's a polarized capacitor using the US symbol. Uh, it's a 15 point or roughly a 15 millimeter uh, uh, capacitor with a five millimeter diameter. And axial means that it the the um the the conductive part goes through the axis of the capacitor. If we see these regular uh, polarized capacitors, regular, regular, there we go, uh, this is like a top-down view of the capacitor. So the capacitor would be sticking up like a little water tower on the circuit. We want to use the axial one where it's on its side. It's a cylinder on its side. So as opposed to looking something like this, if we were looking at the circuit straight on, it would look something like this, like literally the resistor is just rotated 90 degrees on like the x-axis. So we want an axial resistor. A um, non-axial resistor can be very useful for, or excuse me, capacitor can be very useful for uh, for very dense circuits, but Ours is not going to be that dense, so we'll just go ahead and use an axial one. So, hands up if you found that one. Okay, so a couple of people. Not everybody, but a couple of people. Hands up if you found the library, at least, where you're going to find this capacitor. All right. Excellent. So, yeah, just about everybody. Once you find that capacitor, just go ahead and place it right above your uh, your five 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 timer. So now I've got four resistors and a capacitor and a five 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 timer. Oops. It was the C pole US E15 five axial. I, there's no easier way to put it, unfortunately. <laughs> I'll go ahead and just keep the the screen on this window for a second. It's the one that's that's uh, I got highlighted at least in gray. Yes. Yes, it should be under C-Pole US. As you can see up here, C-Pole US. And just raise your hand once you've placed that capacitor onto your schematic. Wait for a couple more hands. Oh, it was just the capacitor and the four resistors. That's all. So far. 
I mean, in the, the, the 555 timer, but everybody should have that. So, so far, everybody's circuit should look something like this so far. Everybody's schematic. And once again, just raise your hand once you've gotten that capacitor placed. And it looks at least something somewhat similar to this. All right. Uh, it's an NE555. So um, no worries. Let me go back to the ad. Uh, the easiest way is just to put an asterisk and then three fives, hit OK, and it should be the bottom result here, the NE555. Uh, <coughs> is there a component that shows time? Um, you, you mean like outputs it so that you can read a time? LCD screen. Um, but honestly, that's, that's, um, that's going to require more more work than uh, than just like plunking an LC LCD screen down. Uh, how do I how do you move things? Ah, excellent question. Okay, so uh, up here on the left hand side of the toolbar, the top there is four arrows and it's labeled move. Now I can't just like click anywhere because my computer is going to freak out. But if you look very closely at all of the components. There, see, like there's a crosshair that's just kind of hidden there in the rest of the design. Same with the um, capacitor up here. There's like just the bottom of the crosshair peeking out. What you got to do is you got to click on that crosshair just once. You don't have to hold down the mouse, and then you can move components around. So if I click in the cross, the vicinity of the crosshair for the resistor and the capacitor and stuff like that, then I'll be able to move it around. If you don't click on it, um, it's it's gonna it's gonna be like I don't know what you're talking about, but if you get like relatively within the vicinity of it, you should be able to move it around. All right, so we've all got. Yeah, but that's um. You got to do it in roughly the same place, but yeah, you could you could totally do that. That is a good point. Um. So okay, we've added our capacitor. We've added our resistors. It is now time to add LEDs. We want to add a couple of LEDs to our um, to our design because we're going to have we're going to have a couple of LEDs blink. So I'm going to go back over to the add component and I'm going to type in LED. I'm going to put a wildcard after it and hit enter. And let's see here. Let's see if we can use. So under the generic Eagle library, there's one labeled LED. The description is LEDs. If you scroll down, there's another one labeled LED. You can also just search for LED 5mm and it will bring up the five millimeter result on the LED. 
because we want the five millimeter LED. That asterisk uh, uh, that I was talking about, the wild card, that it's, it's called a wild card because, um, see, if I search for LED five millimeter, it's searching specifically for all of those characters in that order and nothing else. But if I add an asterisk, it's searching for LED and then any number of characters afterwards, including zero characters. So I get a whole lot more results by doing that. If I just search for LED without it, I, it's hard to tell, but I get fewer results. Um, but anyway, you can just search for LED 5mm, all one word, and get the 5 millimeter, five millimeter LED that you're looking for. Hit OK, and we'll add two of those to our circuit. And once again, just go ahead and raise your hand once you've done that. Waiting on a few more hands here. Alrighty. Um, doing all right over there, Caleb? Just want to make sure. Well, uh, okay. So once you've added the two LEDs, we're going to add, whoops, a terminal. So this is going to be simply a set of screws that will allow us to connect our circuit to power. Um, let me see, let me try typing in screw. That'll probably do the trick. trying to think of what we've got here. Um, power. <laughs> trying to find one that does not have an Adafruit analog or uh, that, that does have an Adafruit analog, excuse me.
Okay, we'll just use this one. So if you type screw into the search bar, hopefully you get this Conwego 500 um, result back. They're all Wago screw clamps. Screw clamps are something that you can screw, uh, uh, let's see here, screw terminals. I'll show you what screw terminals look like. So this is what uh, screw terminals look like you can stick a wire into here and then tighten the screw down and it will keep the wire uh, clamped down and connected to the circuit. So we're adding one of those basically to be able to attach wires to our circuit and keep it clamped down. So like this right here. What we're going to use though is we're just going to use a very simple two terminal screw clamp, power and ground. Um, because we're going to be hooking up power and ground of the circuit and we don't we don't really need multiple um, independent circuits for power and ground we just need the one and everything else is going to be hooked up to it so we'll go ahead and hit okay and we'll place it up here once that's done well once that's done raise your hand but um, once that's done, congratulations. You've placed down all of the components that we're going to be using on our circuit. That's that. We're not going to be using any other components. However, we are going to be re we're going to be moving stuff around in order to be able to hook everything up a little bit more um, cleanly. So let's go ahead and we'll get started on that just so we can have our final layout done so we can start connecting things. Hopefully before like class ends today, uh, certainly by next Monday. I would really like to get started on the. Uh, the uh, board work though on Monday. So we'll, we'll try and get this done as quickly as possible. So um, as, it, as it stands right now, we've got all the components we need and they're all arranged nice and neat. However, they're not all in the positions that they need to be necessarily. Everything is a little bit wonky and out of order. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and move everything into its proper order. So we'll, we'll just go ahead and use the, the move command like I was showing you before, or you can, you, you know, you can right click and select move if you'd like. We're gonna move one LED down here, one up here, and these don't have to be exact. They can just be relatively close. I'm gonna move a capacitor down here. I'm gonna move these two terminals sort of closer together. And then these, we're gonna rotate. Now you notice that I just rotated that like just automatically. If you're moving something and you right click while you're clicking and dragging, you will rotate it. So you can see I'm just rotating these resistors 90 degrees and I'm placing two of them each in a line on either side of the 555 timer bringing this one up here and this one right beneath it. So now by and large, this should be decently close to the final layout of our circuit. Uh, raise your hand once you've gotten your circuit arranged similarly to mine.
Got a couple of hands up so far. Let's see if we can't get a few more. Make sure that everybody's at the same point because this next part that's going to get um, that's going to get into connecting everything together, and I really want to make sure that we're all doing the same thing. And just so we're clear, it doesn't matter which resistor is which. As you can see, I've got R1 and R4 on one side and R2 and R3 on the other side. Doesn't matter. Really doesn't. Um, that's just, those are just the ones I have to pick. However, it is important that you do have the capacitor in the bottom left-hand side and one LED in the bottom left and one LED in the top, or excuse me, bottom right and one LED in the top right. Um, Again, it doesn't have to be LED one at top, and LED two at bottom. You could have swapped them around, but that just the fact that there are LEDs there, that's the important thing. All right, well, let's go ahead and get started on, on um, connecting everything up. So this is the part of the schematic where we tell how everything's connected to one another. So far, we've just been telling the, so far, we've just been setting up what exactly is on the schematic. Now we got to set up how everything's going to be connected together. Thankfully, it's pretty easy. So as you can see, I selected this tool over here labeled net, on the left-hand side. It's on the right column and the left-hand side. Net is what denotes connections on a circuit. That's the one you want to use. Do not use the one labeled bus 
do not use the one, there's one labeled wire. Um, yeah, do not use wire, do not use bus, just use net. Because net will, um, is what Eagle uses to, to denote or determine connections. Thankfully, it's using, using it is very simple. So I can just click on the edge of one component, not click and drag, just click once. And I can click on the end of another component in order to connect them. So as you can see, I connected R3 to R2. I'd like you guys to do that as well, just so they're connected to one another. Because these are gonna be the connections that like you guys are gonna be using for the circuit. Then I'm going to connect 3 to R2, or the, excuse me, the connection between R3 and R2. So as you can see, I clicked there, and I created a dot. That means that 3 here is now connected to the connection between R3 and R2. Now I'm going to connect R2 to this top LED and R3 to this bottom LED. And I'm going to connect the two resistors and the capacitor on the left-hand side. So as you can see right now, I've got just these vertical connections so far. So far, so good. Next, just like I did over here with three, I'm going to have seven connect to the connection between these two resistors. And then, oddly enough, I'm going to have six go all the way down to the connection between my resistor and my capacitor. Now notice there's no dot here. That means that these two do not intersect. You can imagine one is floating harmlessly over the other one and they're not actually connected. Uh, there is no electrical current being passed between those two connections right now because they're not actually touching one another. You gotta have the dot for that. Likewise, I'm gonna connect two to that one I just created. So now two is created to, or is connected to uh, six, and R4 and C1. Hopefully this is, uh, this is making some sense so far. So next we're going to connect our, uh, screw terminals to the rest of our circuit. I'm actually going to bring this down a little bit in order to further um, clarify that. And I'm going to have C1 connect right there. On top of that, I'm going to have one connect to that uh, net as well. And we're almost done with actually netting everything together. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to, I'm going to finish netting everything together. We're going to finish netting everything together. And then we're going to go ahead and, and uh, you know, break for the weekend. So we'll, we'll just, we'll go ahead and finish this out for the home stretch. I want to make sure that it's all connected together and ready to go for, uh, for next Monday. So bam, that one's connected.
bam, that one's connected, bam, that one's connected to that one. And before I forget, I'm going to go ahead and uh, actually connect this resistor to the circuit as well. That's kind of important. But with that, we've connected everything. We've netted everything up together. We have now established all of the connections that exist between all the different components on our schematic. We're done with that. Woo! So for Monday, um, we can spend that entire time actually setting up the board itself. But as you can see here, we've got, you know, our power and our grounds, and we've got our, you know, LEDs hooked up to the power and the ground, and the, the resistors running through in order to ensure that the LEDs don't pop. But, you know, we've got the the output on the 555 timer hooked up to the LEDs. We've got the ground hooked up to the ground part of the uh, circuit. Um, We've got the power part hooked up to the power here and also through our LEDs so that they at least receive some power. Um, we've got the, the uh, different timer mechanisms all hooked up to the back here. This is a completed circuit. Let me zoom in and out. Woo! We did it. We did it. You guys did it. But yeah. Um, I'm going to keep the screen on this. I just wanted to make sure that you guys were able to uh, get at least the netting done so we can just jump right into board design on Monday, um, ensure that we have the maximum amount of time possible in order to work with that. And um, otherwise, that's going to do it for today. So uh, I think for today, I'm just going to skip the poll questions just because we ran it so, so close to the edge. Um, unless you guys would prefer to have the poll questions and then we're going to leave it open for question and answer time. And then you guys are more than welcome to head out for the weekend. So yeah, poll questions, question and answer, question and answer time and uh, weekend.